Hi, my name is Hector Rojas. I'm with TDS Equipment, and today I will be showing you Fluke 1736 Power Logger. The Fluke 1736 can simultaneously measure voltage up to 1,000 volts and current up to 3,000 amps based on the CTs that you have connected. It can also measure harmonics, power, or any type of data that you might need for your study or energy saving strategy. The unit also comes with a bright colored touchscreen and a backup battery that allows for four hours of recording if there were to be a power outage at your site. All right, we're gonna go over the setup of the Fluke 1736 now. If you look at the top of the unit, you're gonna see all our ports. Here are our current ports. You're gonna have four current ports, A phase, B phase, C phase, and your neutral. The top ones are gonna be your voltage, your voltage connections. You got your A, B, C, and neutral. You're going to have an auxiliary connector. Uh, this is hardly used, but if there's an option there if you need it. The DC input allows you to extend the battery pack. Let's say you don't want this big battery pack on your panel because you want to mount it inside. You can connect the DC input to the back of the battery and uh, basically have a longer extension and have a pretty small unit inside the panel. It should fit there properly. And then you're also going to see the communication port here on the right side and also this USB port where you're going to be able to transfer data directly from the unit onto the USB. So starting up the unit is going to take you directly to the meter screen. And real quick, I'm going to teach you how to connect it. These CTs, they have a little nub on the top on one side that allows for proper connection. You won't ever be able to connect these wrong because of that little safety feature. But That's your current CT, your standard 12-inch current CT. That's going to go there. And then you're also going to have your voltage connections up top and these are just regular banana plugs. You can simply just put them up there like this. Now, from the meter screen, you're going to be able to change your configuration here you can change your your study type. Uh, I'm going to stick with the three-phase Y for this tutorial. 120 volt, voltage ratio 1 to 1, and a 60 hertz nominal frequency. You can also see the, the diagram if you'd like to see that instead. And it tells you how to set it up, how to hook it up. So you're all hooked up. You can go back to your meter screen and verify your connection. On this screen, you're gonna see if you connected any CT in, in reverse polarity, or if you accidentally hooked it up wrong. This, this screen here is gonna allow you to fix that without having to go back and flip the CT. It's gonna electronically flip the polarity for you and giving you the, the right readings that you need. So, if you, you can see our CT here, it has a arrow. This is this tells you which way the current has to flow. So the arrow is pointing down. We want current to flow down that way. After we've updated our configurations and verified our connection, we can begin our recording process. And that can be done by going to the logger and then edit setup. You can touch the touch screen here, it's a touch screen. And uh, from here you can change your, your average recording time, your interval. Uh, if you're gonna do an energy study, you can change the, your energy cost. You can get that from your local utility. This one's gonna be ES.030, that's the name. You can go in here and change it to uh, whatever you'd like. The duration, you can update it 
to a 30 minute recording hour one week 30 days so I'm gonna stick with 30 days on this one and uh, the average here you can tell it how often you want it to uh, take the average readings so you can go from one second up to 30 minutes and uh, if you see here on the right side this is your memory the faster average that I select the more memory that it uses up and the instrument is gonna let you know that so let's say um, for 10 seconds it's it's basically using up half of my memory and that's not really a good thing because the file is just gonna be so large and it's gonna be hard to work with through the, the software so personally I like to stick with the recommended 15 days and after this re this 30 day recording I'm still gonna have 97 percent of the memory available so hit enter Okay, it looks like I'm all set up here. From here, you can just hit that start logging. And uh, this is gonna be our logging screen. Um, in this logging screen, you can see your, your volts, amps, hertz. You wanna make sure that you're reading everything that you're supposed to. All the nominals are right. You can see a graph as well if you want to. Uh, you can see your power, reverse the power, whatnot, um, and also your energy, harmonics, and whatnot. Um, so that's pretty much it uh, as far as recording. Whenever you have a recording, you want to make sure that your instrument is connected to power the entire time. The battery runs off the 120 volt input on the right side or you can power the unit with the voltage leads here. You would just jumper it. So if you have this set up here, you're gonna be able to power the unit, the panel itself that it's measuring. And um, yeah, so if you were to lose power while it's recording, the battery itself lasts about four hours. Uh, so we can record up to four hours with no with no uh, power. After that, um, if the unit were to shut down due to loss of power, it would still have the recording saved in there, but it would just stop recording anything after that. So it's pretty it's pretty smart to go back and check on your recording, especially if you're gonna do like a 30 day, maybe go back after a week just to make sure that the unit is still up and running make sure that nobody's touched it or stopped the logging but uh, once you're done logging you can either it's gonna stop by itself if it reaches its time that if it reaches the 30 day it's gonna stop logging on itself or you can manually stop logging by hitting that stop logging button this will be your end screen to transfer data from the unit to a USB You will first plug in the, the USB supplied to the top part. You're going to go to memory settings. And then uh, you can select the logging sessions that you want, or you can just copy all data to USB. I'm going to go ahead and copy all data to USB. And that was it. Once you hit that save to USB, it automatically starts the download process onto the USB. And from there, you can easily take this USB and plug it into your computer that you're going to be using. And uh, we can generate the report from there. Another option is to manually connect this to your computer through the USB port. From there, you would verify the connection, make sure that all the drivers are installed for the unit, and download the data through the software via that USB port.
That concludes my training video for the Fluke 1736. Please like, comment, and share. Let me know what future videos you would like to see next. Again, my name is Hector Rojas. I'm with TDS Equipment. We provide equipment rentals, sales, calibration and repair services, and technical support. Thank you.